welcome. My name is Colleen Tauke and I'm a sewing specialist here at Fonz and Porter. In this Quilting Quickly tutorial, I'm going to show you how to put together the blocks in the quilt, Stones Across Water. If you'd like to purchase this pattern, you can visit our website. This quilt is made, or wall hanging, is made from 10-inch pre-cut squares in this wonderful colors of blues and greens. And we're using a, a, a gray background to kind of represent the ripples of water. Now, the title from this quilt actually is a quote from Mother Teresa. So, um, alone I, can change, I cannot change the world, but I can cast a stone across the waters to create many ripples. So let's create those many ripples. The quilt is then made, we're going to go through those 10 inch squares, and we're going to cut the required number of four and a half inch squares <clears throat> and two and a half inch squares from each of them. The nice part about this is you don't have to go out and gather all of the different colors using a pre-cut pack because that part's already been done for you. They're coordinated beautifully. So here we've got two, um, four and a half, and um, eight of the two and a half inch squares. Those are going to be used to create flying geese units. And I'm going to show you with a chevron shape that we're going to be working toward. So you kind of have an idea. We'll set that, that off to the side. <clears throat> we're going to be using a method where you're going to be creating two different combinations. We've got a turquoise background and a gray background. And you're going to match up with those uh, smaller squares of the opposite color. So it's a kind of a mismatch. Large, small, large, small. So from those, we are going to create the flying geese blocks. Let's walk through those steps. You need to have one of the background fabrics. It's going to become the triangle, kind of the goose shape, as you see right here. So we're going to take, for each of the large, you have four small. You're going to be taking each of these blocks, and you can see here that I've used a ruler to mark these corner to corner with an angle or a straight line, and that's going to be my guide for placing these to make flying geese four at a time. Now, you can see that if I place those properly, that line now extends all the way across the block. This is my guide. I'm going to be sewing one quarter inch to each side of that line. And if your machine, um, the presser foot and your needle can't be adjusted and you're not exactly sure where a quarter inch is going to be, you can go in and actually draw in a line, one quarter inch to each side of that um, center line so you know exactly where to stitch. <coughs> I'm going to bring in one that's already stitched. You can see here in bright red, you would be using a gray or a, a cream color thread, but we've done it in red for your advantage. So you can see that that's stitched. And then we're going to come down through the center there where that diagonal was, and we're going to cut these apart. So you can use the scissors. I can come in and simply cut right down the middle. It doesn't have to be exact. We don't need to use a rotary cutter. A scissors works fine. This is just the seam allowance. Now, take that out of the way. You're going to take those to the iron. You're going to heat set that, set the thread, and then you're going to come in and you're going to open these out. You've probably seen this done before, so I'll go through it fairly quickly. And you're going to do that on both pieces. You're going to press those out, and it creates something like a heart shape. Then you're going to use square number three and four and do the same process. You're going to slide it into the corner like this, and you're going to stitch one quarter inch to each side of those on both pieces. Once you've done that, <clears throat> I can actually fold these back and you can see how they used to fit together. There is that shape. And it's stitched and I'll split down between the stitching lines and press them out and you've created flying geese. So we've got flying geese that are in the combination with a turquoise in the center and we've got combinations with the gray in the center because you're gonna do it with both the fabrics. I guess I did say that we were headed towards this, but this, uh, these happen to be the opposite version. But you're going to be creating the mirror image, both placements. So you'll get blocks that I'll show you. Then have a block with the gray as the triangle here and a block with the turquoise. And as they go fit together to make segments, you can see that large chevron shape then pop out. You'll need four 
and since this process yields four flying geese that all match, one, two, three, four, those all came off the same process. The top, one, two, three, four, came off the process with the other combination. Then you're gonna match them up so you get these nice chevron shapes. And then it's all about placement for this quilt. <coughs> um, as we're creating those, I do want to step back one step. I almost forgot about the trimmer. These are slightly oversized. Um, flying geese blocks tend to get a little wonky as we sew them because we're working with bias directions of stitching. So there is a tool that you can use <coughs> to go in and trim those blocks up. And if you look at how many flying geese are in this little wall hanging, you'll understand why if they're all really precise, they fit together nicely. Um, for this trimmer, there are lines uh, that will tell you where the finished size of your block you want. And it will also give you a crosshatch of where to lay on this little V on your block. So in this instance, we are trying to make a two by three and a half inch block. There's a little V of dark black that fits right over the top where that kind of the nose of the goose part of the block is. We can come in and trim two sides and then trim the other two sides. The cross hatch then this time, there's an X that comes down here, lands right on the nose of the goose again, so we can trim the last two sides. Some people don't like using trimmers, but if you've ever had to try and fit a lot of flying geese pieces together to make a design, you might find that you like trimmers in the end, because that's how we get this nice, neat looking block like this. Now, in order to create the design, you can see that they interlock. For example, this blue interlocks with a gray. So that means that there's a diagram in our pattern that will show you exactly where to place each of the pieces so your interlock works perfectly. The background is cut uh, gray squares so that you can fill in that space and create that ripple stones across water for yourself. If you'd like to see more of our Quilt and Quickly tutorials, please visit our website. Thanks for joining me today.